It is now time for question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. After the recent budget, I applauded the government's investment for autism funding. But just days before World Autism Day, this government announced their new plan. The result of a Toronto Star investigation reported on April 1st that families, I quote, were left devastated by the changes to the autism program. The government is kicking over 2,000 children off the IBI autism treatment waiting list. In exchange, the government offered a pittance of transitional funding to cover private therapy. Mr. Speaker, where does the Premier expect parents to find $50,000 to pay for this private treatment? Won't the Premier listen to the Toronto Star? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, Ahlan wa salam to our uh, visitors, and um, I want to uh, I want to welcome everyone to the uh, legislature today. And I want to just say that um, we are committed to improving the lives of uh, of children and youth with autism, and we're committed to providing them uh, with the best possible services based on the best possible evidence, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. And it is incredibly important that we look at what is working, look at the evidence, Mr. Speaker. And with the prevalence of autism increasing. Um, so were wait times increasing, Mr. Speaker. That status quo was unacceptable, and that's why our budget makes a historic $333 million investment, Mr. Ontario. Speaker, in a new Ontario Autism Program. Um, it's very important that through this investment, the new program will give 16,000 more children yep. access to services, Answer. 500 in the IBI, which is the Intensive Behavioral Intervention, uh, 15,500 uh, to access applied behavioral analysis. Mr. Speaker, back to the Premier. Putting the spin aside, the reality is the Liberals are kicking children off the waitlist without the new programs ready to go. I understand the government wants to reduce wait times for autism treatment, but their solution is to kick children off the waitlist? Really? You know, this seems to be a pretty heartless way to score political points and tout shorter wait times. Mr. Speaker, the government said the cost of inaction was too high. Is that what they're telling parents of autistic children, saying they now have to pay $50,000 a year for private treatment? Mr. Speaker, let's just go through what this investment will do. It'll give 16,000 more children access to services. That's 500 uh, getting more IBI, Mr. Speaker, and 15,500 getting be applied behavioral analysis. We'll cut the wait times in service in half or service in half within the next two years, Mr. Speaker. What the evidence shows, what the science says, is that IBI is very, very effective in the early years. There were children sitting on the wait list, Mr. Speaker. Those young children, when that window of opportunity for IBI was absolutely closing, Mr. Speaker. And so, what we need to do is make sure that younger children get that IBI, Mr. Speaker. That the applied behavioral analysis is available to them. That's why we're providing $8,000 for uh, people who are going off the wait list to be. Able to buy services, Mr. Speaker, and subsequently providing access to, new, to a new ABA program that's more intense, that's longer, and is specifically tailored to uh, those older children. Thank you. Final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, back to the Premier. I haven't got an answer on why the government is kicking children off the wait list. The government's changes will lead to children falling through the cracks of an already underfunded system. You can't stop these programs without something to replace it with. Parents are telling you that autism does not stop at age five. I stop the clock. I would, I would hope that I would not uh, have to be interrupted while I'm speaking. And I would also hope that uh, I don't have to repeat yesterday's need for control. Uh, this will be the last time I speak as a group. You Mr. Speaker, parents are telling the government, telling them and stressing that autism does not stop at age five, right. but the government isn't listening. Mr. Speaker, how are these parents, how are these families living with autism going to be heard? Do they have to buy a $6,000 plate dinner to get a meeting with the Premier? Oh. 
be seated, please. Stop, stop. Stop. No, keep it up. Order. Order. The deputy house leader, come to order, please. The member from Oxford, come to order. The member from Leeds, Grenville, come to order. Premier. Children, Youth Services. Sir, Children and Youth Services. Thank you, Speaker. And let me just say off the bat, Speaker, this government listens to families, this government listens to experts, and we listen to service providers. We did this before the announcement. We did it during the member from Hamilton Mountain come to order. The member from Lambton, Kent Middlesex, come to order. And if it continues, I'll ramp it up to warnings. Minister. Thank you, Speaker. And I continually meet with families who have children on the autism spectrum uh, scale, and I hear from them all the time. I met with more yesterday. And, Speaker, I know change is hard. I'm a mother of a child with special needs. I know what it's like when pro programs transition, but I'm very proud to say that the families who are going to experience change under our new and enhanced program will get the services they need when they need it. So, Answer. yes, there'll be 8,000 that goes towards any services a family wishes to buy immediately. That will immediately move kids off the wait list, Speaker. It's three times more than what Thank we provided you. under the old. Thank you. Stop the clock. Uh, two things. First of all, I'm sitting in the chair and I will do my job. I don't need people from that side or any side telling me how to do it because if I was ready to do something, you just stopped it from happening. New question. The Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. The Minister of Energy is a prolific fundraiser for the Liberal Party because he needs to meet his cabinet seat quota. I am uh, now moving to warnings. The member from Glen Glary, Prescott Russell is warned. Carry on. Mr. Speaker, I, we have appeared to hit a nerve once again. It is reported that the Minister of Energy's fundraising target was as high as $300,000. That's not an easy task for anyone. Some could raise that money through— Stop. Deputy House Leader will stop rising his prop. Thank you. Carry on. More than him has done it. Mr. Speaker, some could raise that money through hard work, or maybe the minister found other ways. So, Mr. Speaker, will the Premier tell us, has any Minister of Energy solicited donations for the Ontario Liberal Party from companies seeking grants or contracts with the Government of Ontario? Yes or no? It's not a complicated question. No. Yes question. or no? Premier. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I appreciate the question from the Leader of the, the Opposition. Uh, as he knows, as I've said, our government's already undertaken a number of initiatives to make elections more accountable, transparent. In 2007, we introduced third-party advertising rules for the first time. We introduced real-time disclosure, Mr. Speaker, for political donations. Uh, I announced last June we're committed to making further changes, Mr. Speaker. And as I announced yesterday, our government plans on introducing legislation on political donations this spring and moving to ban corporate and union donations. Um, Mr. Speaker, I think we have to lead by example, and that's why I've made the decision to immediately cancel upcoming private fundraisers that I attend, Mr. Speaker, and I've also asked the same of my ministers. And I think it's important that we get this right. Everyone in this House, Mr. Speaker, uh, is part of the, uh, is part of the, the current uh, set of rules, and we Answer. need to get this right. That's why I've invited both party leaders to join me for a meeting within the next few days to discuss uh, these important issues. Thank you. Supplement. Mr. Speaker, back to the Premier. That wasn't the question I asked. I'm hoping this time I can get an answer about the conduct of how, how the Premier's ministers are conducting themselves. Let me give an example. Seven renewable energy companies donated $255,000 to the Liberal Party over the last few years. 
All seven of those companies were awarded contracts from the Minister of Energy just a, just a couple of weeks ago. How can the Liberal Party, how can this government possibly claim that their decisions were impartial and fair when seven of those companies gave over a quarter of a million dollars to the Liberal Party's coffers? Mr. Speaker, would all of those contracts have been approved if it wasn't for a quarter of a million dollars in donations to the Liberal Party? It's unconscionable! Please. 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 Thank you. Premier. Deputy Premier. Deputy Premier. Thank you, Speaker. And um, you just heard the, uh, the Premier say that uh, she has determined that she will cancel all uh, private uh, uh, fundraisers going forward. So I guess my question back is, I think if you look on your calendar on April the 19th, you will see that there's a scheduled $10,000 a plate dinner, exclusive dinner. I believe it's at the Albany Club. At the Albany Club. So let me ask the leader of the, op of the opposition: Is he prepared to follow the premier's lead and cancel all future fundraising events? You can take out your eraser and take out that August, uh, April 19th event right now. Show the leadership. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, back to the Premier, and I'd appreciate if we don't deflect questions and I can get an answer to my question about the energy donations, about the donations of the Liberal Party that resulted in contracts. Not very good timing. Mr. Speaker, we in the opposition are not awarding contracts. It is the government. The crux of the problem is that donors are feeling, that fundraisers are feeling to have the ear of the government, that any group has to donate to the Liberal Party. That is not how you conduct the business of the people of Ontario. That's not how you award contracts. Let me give another example of how this line has been completely blurred between the Liberal Party and the government of Ontario. Mr. David Thornton who happens to be the largest donor of the seven companies, Question. used to be employed by the Minister of Energy, has donated 194 times, giving over $100,000 from a company that Thank is you. getting contracts. How is that possible? Thank you. Thank you. Can you it, please? Can you it, please? I would wish that the member was very anxious to curve himself. <coughs> so, moving to warnings might not do it. There are lots of votes today. Deputy Premier. Well, thank you, Speaker. If the Leader of the Opposition is suggesting that he has never accepted donations from people or organizations who want them to oppose government policy, for example, the ORPP, I think I'd like to hear that coming from the Leader of the Opposition. And, Speaker, if he's not prepared to cancel the April the 19th fundraiser at Barbarians, $10,000 a plate for 10 executive types, Speaker, corporate types, I wonder what about May? May the 4th. Now, I understand there's another uh, May, uh, fundraiser, May the 4th, a bargain of $5,000 at Barbarians. So, Speaker, whether it's the Albany Club event or the Barbarian Club event, I really ask the Leader of, the, of Opposition, if you really mean Answer. what you say, you will follow the Premier's lead and you will cancel your corporate fundraisers coming up. Thank you.
New question, the leader of the third party. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Uh, does the Premier believe that it should be one party, the Liberal Party, and one party leader, her, that should be responsible for making the rules that govern how all election campaigns are funded? Mr. Speaker, as I, as I said yesterday and I have said again this morning, um, I, I think that we do need to get this right, Mr. Speaker. I've invited both party leaders to join me to uh, talk with their, uh, their colleagues, to bring advice to us, Mr. Speaker, but we are going to bring legislation forward this spring, Mr. Speaker. We are going to move to ban uh, corporate and union donations, and I look forward to uh, the debate, the public debate that will, uh, that will ensue when that legislation is introduced. Mr. Speaker, and before that, I look forward to the input from the uh, the leaders of the opposition parties. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Supplementary. Ontarians, Ontarians deserve to have faith in the democratic process in our sh and in our shared political system. And I believe that the Premier putting herself in charge of making the rules that govern political campaigns is just wrong. Using the government's majority to force through changes on how our democracy is financed will only lead to more public cynicism. Speaker. That's why it's important to take the politics out of this process and put Ontario's nonpartisan chief electoral officer in charge. Will the Premier do the right thing and ask the Chief Electoral Officer to head up this process? Speaker? Well, Mr. Speaker, I very much respect the advice of the Chief Electoral Officer, and uh, the member opposite knows that there are knows that there are uh, recommendations that have come forward. We're looking at all of those, Mr. Speaker. But I think on the issues that we're discussing today, uh, particularly the banning of corporate and union donations, I think that there is pretty widespread agreement that uh, that that's where we should go, Mr. Speaker. That's why we're going to introduce legislation this spring. I look forward to input from the uh, from the opposition leaders, and I I expect that the opposition leaders will talk with their colleagues and with other people and bring that, uh, bring that advice. And, of course, there will be a very broad public discussion uh, once the legislation is introduced, Mr. Speaker. That's why we've moved the uh, introduction of the date of the legislation up from the fall to the spring so that we can have a good uh, opportunity for the committee to uh, talk to people around the province and have an opportunity to hear from Answer. people in every corner of the province, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. Speaker, when people believe there is one level of access for wealthy donors and another level of access for ordinary Ontarians, it's bad for our democracy, Speaker, and it makes people cynical. When people see the same Premier who took advantage of those lax rules now in charge of drafting the new rules, they become even more cynical, Speaker. Will this Premier commit today to creating a process that is not led by her office and the Liberal political staffers and instead is led by Elections on Ontario, together with academia, civil society, business, labour, and all major political parties. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, I, I really, I do believe, as I said, uh, as I said last June. Um, I believe there need to be changes. That's why we're bringing legislation forward. Mr. Speaker, there has been a, there's been a, a broad discussion. I think that if we look at, the, uh, look at the federal government, Mr. Speaker, we see that there has been a change there for some years, a banning corporate and union donations. I think that there is a, a broad consensus, Mr. Speaker, that that's the direction that we need to go. I am absolutely open to hearing from people across the province. That's why I want to get the legislation introduced so that we can uh, we can get that commentary, Mr. Speaker. And as the as the leader of the third party knows, Order. we hear from people all the time. I talk to people all the time, Mr. Speaker, across the province. I listen to people, Mr. Speaker, and then we make decisions yes, based on that input and based on what we believe is in the best interest of the people of the province. That's how we will move forward, Mr. Speaker, bringing legislation in the spring. New question. Speaker, thank you. My next question is also for the Premier. Yesterday, the Premier said she's open to an open process, but she also said everybody makes suggestions to her. In fact, she just said that again this morning, Speaker. Then she goes away and sets the rules, and it's passed by a Liberal majority, no matter what the opposition, civil society, academics, business, or Labour have to say. That's not an open process, Speaker. It's not democratic. Will this Premier do the right thing and listen to her own advice and make this an open process, Speaker? Well, I, I believe that I believe that we have an open process, Mr. Speaker. I believe. I believe that 
having legislation where there has been input from the opposition leaders, Mr. Speaker, where there has been already a public discussion about uh, about this issue, where there seems to be a consensus on some very fundamental aspects, Mr. Speaker, Why and then a broad discussion. And I would, I, you know, I would say to the leaders of the opposition, they have an opportunity to bring forward into the public realm because it, they can talk with me about it in uh, in the meeting, but obviously they will want to talk publicly about what it is they would like to see changed, what they would like to see the parameters to be around the new fundraising rules, Mr. Speaker. That is, I think, important for this process. In a real way, in this conversation, because there are there are no absolutes here, Mr. Speaker. The fundraising rules have been changed uh, from generation yes, to generation. Every party in this house has been in office and has contributed to the design of fundraising rules at one time or another. This is the next iteration. I look Thank forward you. to their input, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Well, Speaker, you know, it wasn't that long ago that the Premier was promising an open process on the budget, but instead of listening to Ontarians through a pre-budget process, we got a Liberal government public relations exercise. The Minister sent the already written budget to translation before the pre-budget hearings had actually even finished, Speaker. Now, it's deja vu all over again. It's clear that the Premier uh, didn't take the budget consultation seriously, and I'm concerned that she's going to do the same on this very issue, Speaker. Will this Premier take this process out of her office and put Ontario's nonpartisan chief electoral officer in charge? Well, Mr. Speaker, I've said, uh, I've said what, uh, what our intention is. We will bring forward legislation in the spring. We will have a broad public discussion. I look forward to the, uh, I look forward to the leaders of the opposition parties bringing their, uh, their commentary forward. But let's talk about uh, the, the budget, Mr. Speaker. Let's talk about the budget that the leader of the third party has said she will be proud to vote against. Let's Shame. talk about who we listened to, Mr. Speaker, Shame. and the input that we got on, on something like the free tuition, Mr. Speaker. You know, the Ontario University Student Association, the uh, Canadian Federation of Students, the College Student Association, all of them said to us that we need to target the support. to target the student assistance supports for low and low middle income families that's exactly what we have done mr speaker the, that input we heard over um, many months mr speaker and it found its way into the budget i'd like to yes, talk sir. about the environmentalists who have talked to us for years mr speaker about cap and trade about the system that is going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions Wrap up, please. Listen to them, and that is part of our budget and part of our strategy going forward. That's what the leader of the third party is proud to vote against. Mr. Thank you. Final supplementary. And I would do it again, Speaker. I would do it again. Yesterday, the Premier said she was already working on the changes on how campaigns are funded, Speaker, long before any consultation. What that says to me is that the Premier is planning unilateral changes, and frankly, Ontarians have a right to be concerned that these changes will be more about strengthening the Liberal Party than Ontario's democracy. It is not too late for the Premier of this province to do the right thing and to ask the Chief Electoral Officer to head up a truly nonpartisan, nonpoliticized process, Speaker, and ensure Ontarians that this is not yet one once again, all about her and the Liberal Party. Will this Premier do the right thing and open up this process? Well, Mr. Thank Speaker, you. as I uh, as I said today, uh, it is very important that we get this right. Um, I, I announced yesterday that uh, our government plans on bringing the legislation forward, not in the fall, but in the spring, um, and we'll move to banning corporate and uh, union donations. Mr. Speaker, I said this morning that I've made a decision to immediately cancel upcoming private fundraisers. That, uh, that I have attended in the past, Mr. Speaker, and I've asked the same uh, of my ministers. 
It is important that we get this right, and it is important that all of the voices are heard. There is a, a, a high degree of consensus on some of the issues, like the banning of uh, union and corporate donations, but I am very eager to hear from the leaders of the uh, opposition parties on what they are hearing and what they uh, think should be in these uh, changes. So far, Mr. Speaker, I really haven't heard any substantial uh, recommendations Answer. coming from them. I look forward to our meeting. I hope we'll have some. Uh, we'll have a good, constructive conversation. Thank you. New question. The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Children and Youth Services. Last week, as soon as the news broke that children with autism over five years old would no longer receive intensive behavioral intervention, I started hearing from families who were devastated by the minister and her broken promise. Families like the Sturgeons, whose son Daniel turned five this past November, has been on a waiting list for two years. Now, the minister has removed Daniel from the wait list because he's five. Shame. Just imagine how devastated that is to be Shame. so close to receiving this necessary support and then having it ripped away from you. Shame. Families like the Sturgeons just don't trust you to do the right thing. Shame. Will the minister do the right thing today and reverse her decision to remove children like Daniel from accessing IBI therapy? Thank you. Minister Children and Youth Services. Well, Speaker, I think it's important to, to note that the $333 million is entirely for new services and programs for children. Let, let's not lose sight of that. And as a, thank you. And, Speaker, as the Premier mentioned, the program also involves creating 16,000 new spaces for children to receive the therapies they need in the appropriate developmental window. And as children transition, the children over five transition off the IBI wait list, they will receive more services under the new integrated autism program. We're going to work directly with Family Speaker to work on transition planning to make sure Answer. they get the services they need. And there'll be new early diagnosis pilots as well, Speaker. Thank, Thank you. Supplementary. The minister wants to talk about other issues. I want to talk about the children over five who have been removed from a waiting list. You know, you made great hay talking about how there was going to be no more wait lists. I don't think anybody thought no more wait lists means you're off. Another family, the McIsaac son, Dale, was diagnosed with autism in June of 2018. Come to order. Real families. It's not a laughing manner. Another family, the McIsaacs, their son Dale was diagnosed with autism in June 2013. Dale turned six on April 2nd. Now there's no hope for him to receive IBI therapy from the province. And giving $8,000 to the McIsaacs to find their own supports until the solution and to find their own solution, while this family is currently paying over $16,000 per year for eight hours Question. of therapy, Speaker, when will the minister provide real support for families with children with autism? Thank you, Minister. I think $330 million is real money. It is real support. inaction is too high. We know the prevalence rates are up. The wait lists are far too high. And if we do nothing, Speaker, those wait lists will go from Order. one or two years to five years by 2018. That's unacceptable to me. That's unacceptable to this government. And we will provide direct support to families wherever they are in this journey to the new program, Speaker. I think if the member is asking me that we should make how changes, further changes, I think what she's suggesting is it prevent children under the age of five from re receiving wow. interventions when they need it most. Clinical experts have advised the speaker about the appropriate developmental windows. The, the member from Dufferin Caledon is warned. You have uh, a wrap-up sentence. 
Thank you, Speaker. It's also important to note that the one-time funding for families who have children over the age of five coming uh, off the list will receive enhanced ABA support uh, when that $8,000 expires, and there will be more support. Thank you. <clears throat> New question. The member from Kitchener-Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. Can the minister tell Ontarians if major donors to your party get special treatment? Thank you, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, we listen to the people of Ontario uh, on all matters pertaining to the development of policy. They're the ones that are important in the development of this budget. We also listened to the members of the opposition and the standing committee when they did their review. A lot of that is incorporated into this budget, Mr. Speaker. That's what we listen to. That's what's important, and that's what we'll continue to do. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, Mr. Speaker, in 2015, Alice Dawn contributed more than 24,000 to the Ontario Liberal Party, and in 2015, the Liberal budget. Deputy House Leader, you're warned. Finish, please. And in 2015, the Liberal Budget Measures Act changed the Labour Relations Act to specifically help one single employer, Ellis Don. Nobody else was asking for it, and it didn't help any other businesses. Now, the year before, the Premier backed off a previous deal to support a private member's bill that would have done the exact same thing, which does leave one wondering, did the, did the money make the difference? I'm sure the minister can see why some people might be skeptical. Can the minister explain to the people of this province what happened here? Thank you, Minister Finance. Mr. Speaker, what is happening is that members of the opposition have fundraisers. What is happening, they receive donations from the very same people. I have a list here of NDP donations as well, and as well as the corporates that they receive and the, union and the unions that they receive funding from. It is happening, and we are looking at changing that, Mr. Speaker. We ask the members of the opposition to stop their fundraisers as well, as the Premier is doing right now. Thank you. Thank you. New question, the member from Tokyo North. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Economic Development. Speaker, to our guests in the upper gallery, Salam alaikum, marhaba, alan wasalan. Speaker, I wanted to let the youngest of our visitors know that they no longer have to sleep under their beds here in Canada, as many continue to do in order to avoid being bombed or shelled. Speaker, Ontario has welcomed over 14,000 refugees as part of the federal effort to bring 25,000 Syrians to Canada. I am humbled, honoured, grateful and proud of the province of Ontario under Premier Wynne, as well as Prime Minister Trudeau, for the open and genuine welcome extended to these newest of Canadians. In addition, we provided funding to support Lifeline Syria's effort to help resettle refugees from the Syrian conflict in the GTA through private sp sponsorship. Speaker, would the minister describe for this House Question. what Ontario is doing to support refugee resettlement in Ontario? Minister of Citizenship, Immigration and thank you, Speaker. Trade. I want to thank the honourable member from Etropical North for asking the question. Speaker, I also want to welcome the newcomers from the Syrian conflict to Ontario and to Canada. Speaker, they are one of us. At the same time, Speaker, I want to thank the uh, great work done by a settlement services agency called COSTI. They have done great work, Speaker. <laughs> Speaker, Ontario has support and continues to support refugees and other vulnerable people from all over the world. That's why last year we announced 8.5 million to support the travel, arrival, settlement and integration of refugees in Ontario. We also committed $2 million for international aid. Speaker, Ontario has allocated over $6 million to enhance sponsorship support Answer. and resettlement services in targeted community. Speaker, we are proud of the work that we have done so far. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, uh, as an MPP and MD, I was disheartened and disturbed when the former Harper government cut health care services for refugees in Canada, who, as you will know, are some of the most vulnerable people on the planet. In fact, it is a matter of public record that the Leader of the Opposition, in an earlier incarnation, voted to cut federal refugee health care. Health 
professionals saw the suffering caused by these unilateral cuts, and even the Supreme Court of Canada called the cuts cruel and unusual. <coughs> And your question on government policy is? Our government speaker reinstated as access to these essential health care services for refugee claimants through the Ontario Temporary Health Program. And Ontario has always been a place that stands up for people fleeing from war, famine, and persecution. Would the minister please inform this chamber about our government's health care for question. refugees and new Canadians here in Ontario? Thank you. Minister. Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, long -term care. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd also like to welcome our guests uh, here today. Ahlan wa sahlan, assalamu alaikum, marhaban bikum fi Canada. And Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to announce that as of last Friday, in fact, April the 1st, the federal government fully restored the refugee health program, which was, as we know, drastically cut in 2012. And our province has welcomed to date over 14,000 Syrian refugees here in Ontario. And that's something that we all should be proud of and can share credit for the welcoming for these individuals. At the Ministry of Health, we're working with all our health care providers, with a range of partners, uh, with our community uh, service organizations, to ensure that all the proper health supports, together with our federal government, all the proper Answer. health supports are provided for our new guests to this country. Welcome again, and I'm so proud to be here with them this morning. Thank you. My question is to the Premier Speaker. During the latest round of wind and solar procurements, the Liberals gave contracts to seven major companies. Yep. These companies donated more than a quarter of a million dollars over the past few years alone. Mm -hmm. This all comes while the Auditor General has said, we don't need to be procuring more energy. We've all, we're already on pace to export 52 million megawatts over the next five years, which is enough to power Nova Scotia till 2020. Speaker, will the Premier admit these renewable contracts aren't signed because Ontario needs the power? They're just the Liberal Party's way of paying back the quarter of a million favours yep. these companies have done for them. That's exactly what it is. Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Premier. Infrastructure. Minister of Economic Development and Infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, to be frank, I thought the member opposite was better than that. The, 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 the innuendo in that question, Mr. Speaker, is, is absolutely inappropriate. When I, when I think about it, I mean, we could send the same thing back to them, and we won't, because we're going to be above that, Mr. Speaker. This process has a fairness commissioner involved in it that oversees every one of these contracts. It is completely unfettered when it comes to any kind of politicized politicization of, of these types of contracts. Mr. Speaker, they're administered through a process, and they're, they're done through the independent electricity systems operator. The member's been a critic for energy. He knows that. That's an unfair innuendo, and I think the member should be embarrassed by even making that allegation. Thank you. Supplementary. I don't think it's an innuendo. I think it's a fact. Back to the, uh, back to the Premier. Uh, I'm not embarrassed, but that answer certainly should embarrass you. Absolutely. The Premier can deflect from the real reasons these unnecessary contracts are being signed, but we all know she's just paying it forward. After all, her Minister of Energy... Now the member is getting too close to the line. Um, I, I want to gu guard him uh, against making a, compliment, uh, a, a, a comment that uh, Im impugns the motive. So uh, the member will will reword that. The Minister of Energy has to meet a $300,000 a year quota. What better way to meet the quota than to hand out government contracts to his favourite donors? Yet, yet, three companies, Enerfin, SWV Development and Interjex, wind companies who applied but for contracts, got none. Coincidentally, they never made a single donation to the Liberal Party. Question. How can the Premier claim this is an impartial process when the companies that don't donate get nothing and companies that donate a quarter of a million dollars are signed, well, get signed lucrative contracts? Thank you. Minister. Mr. Speaker, the only thing it's substantive in his question is smear and innuendo. The fact is the large uh, renewable procurement process is administered by the independent electricity systems operator. It's completely arm's length, completely non-political. The member should know that because he's a critic, but he can't help himself, Mr. Speaker. He has to get into innuendo. He has to get into smear. And, Mr. Speaker, I think that's beneath him. I think the member... 
The uh, member from Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke is warned. The member from Prince Edward Hastings is warned. Finish, please. Let's be very clear. All of the contracts that come through this process are public. They're circulated publicly, and all of the donations he's referring to are public. This is nothing but empty innuendo, and as I said, it's very much beneath the dignity of that member. Yes, sir, thank you. New question. The member from Nickelbelt. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Labour. Does the minister believe that workers should have the right to choose their union freely? Thank you, Minister of Labour. Speaker, I think in the province of Ontario, we have a history of labour negotiations and a Labour Relations Act that has served this province well, and I think the tenet that the, the member across has just described is one that is shared by, by all members of this House. As we're going through the Changing Workplaces Review with the advisor, we're taking a look at the, uh, the Labour Relations Act, Speaker. We have an open period in construction that serves this province well. So to summarize my answer, Speaker, I would have to say yes. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Well, in 2015, Service Employees International Union, better known as SEIU, contributed more than $30,000 to the Ontario Liberal Party. In previous year, SEIU contributed even more money to the Liberal Party. And in 2015, Bill 109 was introduced and became law, Speaker. Bill 109 made changes to our labour law that specifically help SEIU. Other unions in the sector says that Bill 109 is not fair and they are hoping to defeat it through a charter test. Some skeptic might be wondering what was going on. Can the minister shed some light on that process? Speaker, that's a bit of a stretch, to say the least. <laughs> what, uh, what has happened is that when we have a merger of organizations, Speaker, often there are bargaining unions attached to each of the organizations that merge. What happened is that some members of the, uh, of the labor movement came forward and said, is there a better way of doing this? Is there an easier way of doing this that doesn't cause as much strife and unrest as that transition is taking place for the implementation of a first contract? Speaker, some members of organized labor were on this side of the bill, other members of organized labor on that side of the bill, Speaker. We, we listened to both. We introduced legislation into this House. We're still listening to both parties as to ascertaining what number of people should, should apply in the regulation that follows from this, Speaker. This is a perfect example of government listening to organizations that bring good ideas before it, having the proper debate Answer. in this House, and bringing forward strong legislation, Speaker. Well, thank you, Speaker. Um, my question today is for the Minister of Government and Consumer Services. And, Speaker, you'll be pleased to know it has nothing to do with the $1.6 million that the Leader of the Opposition raised from his corporate friends in his leadership campaign. So, speaker, the 2016 Ontario budget commits our government to many programs that will make life easier for all Ontarians. And I know that Service Ontario will play an important role in this by making frontline services easier to access, more reliable and more affordable. And while many people prefer having one-on-one person-to-person contacts and transactions, it's essential that our government evolve with technology to provide good online services. So this budget announced that it will enhance customer experience in services Ontario. So, Speaker, would the minister please share with this house and my constituents of Beaches East York and my mother, who's here on her birthday today in the West Gallery, his plans to improve delivery of government services for Ontario? Thank you. Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Thank you, uh, Speaker. I start by wishing uh, the member from Beaches East York's mother a very happy birthday. I also want to thank. Uh, for the question, I'm pleased with the progress we're making through Service Ontario to continue to modernize services that Ontarians count on. As the budget emphasized, Service Ontario is transforming and improving service delivery by increasing access to a wide range of services. In the past four years, customer interactions at retail contact centres have increased by 8.6 per cent and 4.1 per cent in the last year alone bringing it to 49 million transactions. This creates need for us to match the growing demand at our 300 retail centres 
by increasing online availability. That's why we're working to develop an online renewal option for health cards in Ontario. We're also planning to align how Ontarians change Answer. their address for both health cards and driver's licenses. Great. Speaker, I'm pleased with the progress we're making, and I'll have more to say in the supplementary. supplementary. Well, thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the Minister. We know he's doing tremendous hard work in the Ministry to improve services. And we expect modern service delivery, and our government has shown this leadership. So working with customers and stakeholders to provide more service online has been a priority. This allows Ontarians to spend less time in lineups and more time with their loved ones. Businesses also expect that government services will be delivered efficiently and reliably, and they appreciate the convenience of online services provided by Service Ontario. So I understand, Minister, that these steps are being taken while we are also ensuring the new services are fiscally responsible and they will protect an individual's private information. So, Minister, Speaker, would the Minister please update the House on the many steps that his ministry has taken to increase access to online services for Ontarians Question. while ensuring their privacy? Thank you. Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Speaker, and again uh, to the member from Beaches East York. Thank you for the question. As the member mentioned, the Service Ontario commitments that we've made as part of the budget were part of an extensive, ongoing effort uh, to improve access to convenient, safe, and secure online services. Service Ontario completes 10.5 million online transactions every year, offering more than 40 services online, such as driver's license renewals, license plate sticker renewals, newborn registrations, address changes, vehicle information packages, and of course, birth certificates. Parents can now register their child's birth and apply for a social insurance number, a certificate, uh, and uh, other benefits in the four-in-one package. And in 2013, we became the first province in the country to provide drivers with an online renewal service. With the rapid expansion of these programs, we're constantly monitoring security measures as well. With the use of our 24-7 Security Operations Centre, we're ensuring that the sensitive information of Ontarians is securely protected, and I look forward to building on the Thank progress you. that we're making, Speaker. Thank you. Question. A member from Nipissing. Thank you, and good morning, Speaker. Uh, my question is for the Minister of Finance. Yesterday, the Minister gave a vague answer to my question about dealings he and his office had with stakeholders when it comes to political donations and access. Based on the minister's comments last week and the premier's new agenda, I can see why he was squirming. Speaker. Last week's Globe and Mail headline stated, Sousa defends secret fundraiser as part of the democratic process. Now he's been called out publicly and his tune is suddenly different. Where in the minister's, my question is, where in the minister's mandate letter does it state that part of his job requirement is to raise $500,000 a year for the Liberal Party? Wow. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, my mandate letter is very, very public, and the work I do is very public. In fact, it's written in a document that expresses the values and the priorities of Ontarians, Fantastic. of all stripes and of all ages, and Mr. Speaker, of all levels, be it in corporate, be it in academics, be it uh, in hospitals, Union. be it children, be it unions, be it corporates, be it professionals. All the people of Ontario are represented in the document. That's a document that matters. That's a document that that member is opposing. He's opposing supports for more hospitals. He's opposing more supports for more education. He's opposing, uh, he's opposing free tuition, Mr. Speaker, for the most vulnerable in our society. That is what concerns us. That is our priorities. That is what we're moving forward. That's what's, that's yes, what's in my mandate letter. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the minister, hopefully I'll get an actual answer uh, to this question. Speaker, here are his words as quoted by The Globe and the Toronto Star. Quote, it's not something I have been concerned about. I don't worry about fundraising. Really, Speaker? No concern about organizing a secret $7,500 a plate funder last year in which the banks that profited from the privatization of Hydro One helped him raise about $165,000. Wow. Executives representing several financial services firms that were part of the Hydro One syndicate were also there, according to the emails obtained by the Globe and Mail. Speaker, is the minister really going to stand there and insist that cabinet access hasn't been sold through the Ministry of Finance office? Wow. You say the case? You say the case? 
Thank you. Yes, sir. Speaker, the Premier has been made very clear, and I've uh, advised my campaign staff that we are to cancel all private fundraisers, as we believe the member of the opposition should as well. We ask, are you going to now cancel your April 19th private and exclusive fundraiser at the Albany Club? Cancel that. Are you going to cancel your May 4th exclusive 5,000 per head fundraiser at Barbarians? Are you going to do that? Because we believe that you should, and we will as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Please. You see her, please. Thank you. You won't know when I'm going to strike. No question. Member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Last week, the government announced that it was reducing the wait, wait list for autism treatment by kicking children five years and older off the list. Families and kids who have been languishing on wait lists for years because of this government's inaction and misplaced priorities are now being told that they will never access the service that they have been waiting so long for. In some cases, they are being denied just weeks after being told that they have been finally approved for services. It's disgraceful. Families came to Queen's Park to talk about their life on the wait lists, and this government responds by kicking them off that list. It's absolutely shameful, Speaker. Will the Premier admit she is failing families with kids of ASD and immediately grandfather all children currently on the wait list at the time Question. of their announcement? Minister of Children and Youth Services. Minister of Children and Youth Services. Speaker, it's important to note by making these changes, we're actually taking children off the IBI wait list. We're giving them immediate uh, support with the $8,000 and transitioning them to an enhanced ABA program. And we're doing that, that will, as I said before, create 16,000 new therapy spa uh, uh, spaces, Speaker. And, you know, I do want to. Thank the member for the question. However, it is important to note that in November of just last year, she said study after study shows that early intervention is critical for children with autism. We agree with that, Speaker, and we're following the evidence. The evidence shows that children receiving services in the right developmental window is important. And I know the member opposite also asked us to reduce wait lists and get kids the services uh, they Answer. need as soon as possible. So that's what our investment of, of 333 million new dollars will do, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. This government allowed that list to grow out of control, and now they want you to pay the price for it. <laughs> Speaker, more than 8,000 parents have signed an online petition begging this government to reverse its decision. My office has received literally hundreds of emails from families who are completely devastated by the news. I'm going to send over the many letters that I have received to the Premier and to the Minister. If the Minister thinks that she is doing the right thing, she should respond personally to each family. Mm -hmm. Parents who were told weeks ago that their kids were ideal candidates all of a sudden are being kicked off the list. Will the Premier explain to families of kids with ASD why she doesn't think their kids deserve access to life-changing treatment? Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Speaker. And I have been talking with family speaker, and I understand that change and transition can be difficult. But as far as I'm concerned, as the Ontario Minister of Children and Youth Services, the cost of doing nothing is far too high. We've been investing heavily, $190,000 a year in autism, but the prevalence rates are higher, Speaker. The $190 million a year, thank you. And the wait lists are high, so we need to address that. And, Speaker, if, if the opposition doesn't want to hear from me about this, let's 
let's hear from what the experts say. So the executive director for Autism Ontario said families raising children with autism have been waiting a long time for this announcement. Providing early, evidence-based intervention when it matters most will set children with autism on the best path forward. Let's hear from the regional autism providers of Ontario. They said we're very excited Answer. about what this historic investment means for children and youth. Uh, with families who uh, experience autism, more families will receive the right service at the right time. Thank you. And, and there's others. New question, the member from Barrie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Minister, this side of the House is very proud of agriculture's contribution to Ontario's economy, generating over 781,000 jobs and over $35 billion in GDP each and every year. Ontarians also know that when they buy local food, they help to create jobs and economic growth in communities all across this province. In my riding of Barrie, we benefit from several agri-food businesses that are innovating and attracting a growing clientele. Tell. Could the minister please? <laughs> I've been uh, standing for quite some time because I wanted to get the attention of somebody else on the other side. I believe the minister has heard the question, but you can have one sentence to uh, wrap up, please. Uh, could the minister please inform the House on how the government recognizes the work that is being carried out by food producers and processors to innovate and compete both locally and globally? Thank you. <laughs> minister Barry, food Excellent, and food question. Excellent question. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank the member uh, from Barry for a question this morning. And I do know in the Barry area that she's a champion of the farmers in that area. Somebody's got Mr. Work. Speaker, as we all know, Ontario's agri-food sector is among the most innovative in the world. That's why, in 2006, we announced the launch of the Premier's Award for Agri-Food Innovation to help foster innovation in Ontario's agriculture and food sector. To date, more than 475 award-winning initiatives have been recognized by our government. These innovative projects are boosting the agri-food sector by adding value added to existing products, helping to create jobs and contribute to economic growth. Award recipients are eligible to receive prizes from $5,000 to $75,000, grants that can go towards further investment in their agri-food businesses. Good Thank you. Good Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the minister for that answer. I'm glad to see that our province is celebrating the agri-food sector's job creation and economic growth potential. In 2014, I had the opportunity to hand an award to Berry Hill Farms, which started a, tr a trial to freeze and sell surplus asparagus spheres. Businesses and individuals like these are contributing to the Premier's growth challenge for the agri-food sector to double its growth rate and create 120,000 jobs by the year 20. Wow. I have no doubts that the individuals and businesses in my finish, please. Businesses in my riding would be interested in applying for these great awards. Can the minister please provide another example of last year's recipients and whether Ontarians can apply for the Agri-Food Innovation Awards for this year? Question. Thank you, Minister. Good question. Excellent question. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. I thank the member from Barry for a supplementary question. I know in the weeks to come she'll be joining her farmers out in the fields to see how we start the crop growing season for 2016. All right. Last year we handed out about 50 Agri-Food Awards across the province. Last November, uh, the Premier joined me in recognizing the top award winner, the Rangrajanan family in Simcoe County, who created their own training program to provide nine students wow. with the skills they needed for the operations of VJ Meats, whose products can be purchased at Lagos and other retail operations across the province of Ontario. <laughs> I'm pleased to afford the House that, again, we're handing out the Premier's awards again this year, but, Mr. Speaker, time is running out. You've got to apply before 5 p.m. On Friday, April the 15th, I encourage all members to reach out to their innovative agri-food centers in the riding Answer. and apply immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Your question? Member from Huron-Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is 
question is to the finance minister. Speaker, the Liberals were caught four years ago using the Drive Clean program to rake in massive multi-million dollar profits. Yep. The Auditor General specifically warned the Liberal government that it could not claim Drive Clean was revenue neutral while using the program to make money. But that's exactly what the Liberals did, Speaker. In fact, the Auditor General reported the government would generate $50 million in profits by the end of the current drive clean contract. So I have my simple question to the minister is this. What was the total surplus the government generated from the drive clean program from 2011 to 2016? Thank you. Minister I appreciate the question. I know we've had this one before, and we have moved to have a cost recovery of the program as is necessary, and that's what we admitted to, and that's what we're saying. Unlike what the member opposite's party had introduced initially, which created excess revenues, and we've curbed that activity and we made it cost neutral. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Speaker, it's very disappointing that this finance minister struggles to even answer a simple question he should have the number for. So let's try again. The Liberals have generated millions of dollars in profits from the Drive Clean program, which the Auditor General pointed out is an unlawful tax and must be paid back to Ontario drivers. Yet the Liberals have not followed the Auditor General's recommendation. Speaker. Instead, they're continuing the Drive Clean program and will likely pay for it using the profits they've accumulated. So again, Speaker, will the minister disclose the total surplus and explain whether the government plans to use the money it overcharged Ontario drivers to pay for Drive Clean for the next two years? Mr. Speaker, as, as the member may know, there is actually going to be no charges for the Drive Clean program because of the budget we eliminated. So I don't only Mr. Speaker, only the Conservatives could see the elimination of a fee as somehow costing people something, but their math has never been that good, Mr. Speaker. Second, you know, it's interesting. This is a very successful program. I get lobbied by businesses and people in Finish, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, we get lobbied and by many other provinces. Quebec does not have a uh, Quebec does not have a drive drive clean program, Mr. Speaker. And the problem Quebec has is that old cars are dumped into the Quebec market, increasing their carbon dioxide and greenhouse gas emissions. This program is very well regarded internationally. Sir, My ministry gets many requests to help other jurisdictions introduce such a dynamic and effective program, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. But before I ask it, I just want to acknowledge that Shannon Bertrand, uh, the young paramedic who came into my office about PTSD and kicked this whole thing off about eight years ago, has, has joined us in the House. And to all of our first responders here, I just want to say thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, while I'm thrilled that there is uh, recognition that first responders in this province experience post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of what they experience on the job, I'm of course disappointed that many groups of frontline workers are still excluded from Bill 163. In the original iteration, my bill talked about all workers. Can the minister tell me why he didn't stand up for one group in particular, frontline nurses, to recognize that nurses experience PTSD on the job? Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker, and thank you to the sure, uh, member for this question. Speaker, when this idea was first discussed around, uh, around these halls, Speaker, the idea was to pass a bill that really only protected firefighters, protected police officers, and protected paramedics. It excluded corrections officers, Speaker. It excluded dispatchers. It excluded First Nations people. What we did, Speaker, is we went through an exhaustive exercise with these groups. We consulted. We talked to people that were coming to speak to us from the associations, many of whom who are represented here today. They told us to move ahead. 
that this had taken far too long. It was time to take those steps forward. Speaker, in corrections, we've included nurses. We've looked at our first responders who are twice as likely to get PTSD as anybody else in this province, Speaker, and we've moved ahead to include them. That's what the people Answer. in the audience have asked us to do, is to pass this bill, Speaker. That's exactly what I hope we do in about five minutes from now. The uh, Associate Minister of Finance on a point of order. Thank you, Speaker. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome a group from my riding with uh, their teacher, Joseph Wong, the West Hill ESL Centre. Please welcome them. The member from Beaches East York on a point of order. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. My mother wasn't in the House when we had introductions earlier. I'd like to wish her happy birthday today. We're going to go have lunch in the Legislature. Don Potts, welcome to Queen's Park. We have a deferred vote on the motion of third reading of Bill 163, an act to amend the Workplace Safety and Insurance Act 1997 and the Ministry of Labour Act with respect to post-traumatic stress disorder. Call on the members. This will be a five-minute bell.
members please take their seats. All members, please take your seats. She's struggling. <laughs> On April the 5th, uh, 2016, Mr. Flynn moved third reading of Bill uh, 163, an act to amend the Workplace Safety and Insurance Act 1997 and the Ministry of Labour Act with respect to uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. All those in favour, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the court. Mr. Bradley, Madame Mayor, Madame Mayor Mr. Souza, Mr. Souza, Ms. Wynn, Ms. Wynn, Ms. Matthews, Ms. Matthews, Mr. Hoskins, Mr. Hoskins, Ms. Sandals, Ms. Sandals, Mr. Duga, Mr. Duga, Ms. McCharles, Ms. McCharles, Mr. Quinter, Mr. Quinter, Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, Mr. Cole, Mr. Takar, Mr. Takar, Mr. Berardinetti, Mr. Berardinetti, Mr. Delaney, Mr. Delaney, Mr. Dillon, Mr. Dillon, Mr. Orzetti, Mr. Orzetti, Mr. McMeekin, Mr. McMeekin, Mr. Murray, Mr. Murray, Mr. Chan, Mr. Chan, Mr. Moridi, Mr. Moridi, Mr. Coteau, Mr. Coteau, Mr. Leal, Mr. Leal, Madame Lalonde, Madame Lalonde, Mr. Quadri, Mr. Quadri, Mr. Albanese, Mr. Albanese, Mr. Dixon, Mr. Dixon. Dixon, Ms. Manga, Ms. Manga, Mr. Crack, Mr. Crack, Ms. Wong, Ms. Wong, Ms. Hunter, Ms. Hunter, Mr. Sergio, Mr. Sergio, Mr. Morrow, Mr. Morrow, Ms. Jassy, Ms. Jassy, Mr. Del Duca, Mr. Del Duca, Ms. Domerlo, Ms. Domerlo, Mr. Fraser, Mr. Fraser, Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker, Mr. Ballard, Mr. Ballard, Mr. Dong, Mr. Dong, Ms. Hogarth, Ms. Hogarth, Ms. Koala, Ms. Koala, Ms. Molly, Ms. Molly, Mrs. Martin, Mrs. Martin, Mrs. McGarry, Mrs. McGarry, Mrs. McMahon, Mrs. McMahon, Mr. Milchin, Mr. Milchin, Ms. Naidu Harris, Ms. Naidu Harris, Mr. Potts, Mr. Potts, Mr. Rinaldi, Mr. Rinaldi, Ms. Verniel, Ms. Verniel. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. McNaughton. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Urick. Mr. Urick. Mr. Hudak. Mr. Hudak. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mrs. Marteau. Ms. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipies. Mr. Pettipies. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Ms. Denovo. Ms. Denovo. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Mr. Bantal. Mr. Bantal. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Satler. Ms. Satler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Mr. Dan Jelena. Mr. Jelena. Ms. Fight. Ms. Fight. Ms. Campbell. Ms. Campbell. Mr. Monta. Mr. Monta. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. Gretzky. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. All those opposed, please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. The ayes are 96, the nays are zero. The ayes being 96 and the nays being zero, I declare the motion carried. Third reading of the bill, closing lectures, please be left. Be it resolved that the bill be now passed and be entitled as in the motion. We have a deferred vote on the motion for closure on the, on the motion for second reading of Bill 151. Call in the members, this will be a five minute bill.
On February 16, 2016, Mr. Murray moved second reading of Bill 151, an act to enact the Resource Recovery and Circular Economy Act 2015 and the Waste Diversion Transition Act 2015 and to repeal the Waste Diversion Act 2002. Mr. Fraser has moved that the question be now put. All those in favour of Mr. Fraser's motion, please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Ms. Ms. Souza. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Mr. Mayor. Madam Mayor. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sanders. Ms. Sanders. Mr. Dugan. Mr. Dugan. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Pratt. Mr. Pratt. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassy. Ms. Jassy. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Darmerla. Ms. Darmerla. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McMahon. Mrs. McMahon. Mr. Milton. Mr. Milton. Mrs. Nidu Harris. Mrs. Nidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mrs. Reneal. Mrs. Reneal. All those opposed, please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Mr. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Ms. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Hudak. Mr. Hudak. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Marteau. Ms. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipes. Mr. Pettipes. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Vantal. Mr. Vantal. Ms. Denovo. Ms. Denovo. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Madame Jelina. Madame Jelina. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Campbell. Ms. Campbell. Mr. Montag. Mr. Montag. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. Gretzky. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. The ayes are 52, the nays are 44. The ayes being 52 and the nays being uh, 44, I declare the motion carried. Mr. Murray has moved second reading of Bill 151, an act, uh, an act to enact the Resource Recovery and Circular Economy Act 2015 and the Waste Diversion Transition Act 2015 and to repeal the Waste Diversion Act 2002. Is it the pl uh, pleasure of the House the motion carry? Yeah. I heard a no. All those in favour say aye. aye. Are those opposed say nay? nay? In my opinion, the ayes have it. Calling the members, this will be a five-minute bell.
Would all members please take their seats? All members, please take your seats. Mr. Murray has moved to second reading of Bill 151, an act to enact the Resource Recovery and Circular Economy Act 2015 and the Waste Diversion Transition Act 2015 and to repeal the Waste Diversion Act 2002. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, rise and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Duga. Mr. Duga. Mr. McCharles. Mr. McCharles. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Ms. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassic. Ms. Jassic. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Domerla. Ms. Domerla. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McMahon. Mrs. McMahon. Mr. Milch. Mr. Milch. Ms. Nidu Harris. Ms. Nidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Ms. Verniel. Ms. Verniel. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. McNaughton. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Hudak. Mr. Hudak. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mrs. Marteau. Mrs. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipees. Mr. Pettipees. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Tavins. Mr. Tavins. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Madame Jolina. Madame Jolina. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Campbell. Ms. Campbell. Mr. Montauk. Mr. Montauk. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. Gretzky. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. All those opposed, please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. The ayes being 94 and the nays being zero, I'll declare the motion carried. Second reading of the bill, does the lecture to the law? The Minister of the Environment. So, so policy committee, please, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> So ordered. There are no deferred votes. This House stands recessed until 3 p.m. this afternoon.